Hey everyone, if you've ever bought or thought of buying an uninterruptible power supply, or UPS, to keep your internet, computer, or some lights running in a power outage, you may know that they use pretty small batteries and will usually only keep things like a desktop computer running for about an hour at most. This will help with small outages, but some, especially if you're in a rural area, can last a lot longer than that. Today, we're going to look at a flexible UPS that lets you use your own external battery so you can make it run as long as you need. I bought this 300 watt pure sine wave UPS inverter from inverter.com. They seem to be a Chinese company that ships directly from China. They have a bunch of different capacities on their site and each one's customizable with a few options. The 300 watt model I got was set up for a 12 volt input for the battery. You can also select 24 volt from this list or contact them for 48 volt batteries. For the output voltage I picked 120 volts and for the output socket they offer the cursed universal socket that could probably fit multiple different countries but I opted for the USA option which gives me a NEMA 515 receptacle. Finally I picked the lithium battery option which I assume changes the charging profile and the low voltage cutoff. Personally, Personally, I would have preferred if they just had a switch or a jumper setting to change this, like on the various solar charge controllers that I have. The ordering experience was fine, like most things from China it took a bit to show up. I did have some duties on the order that I had to pay from UPS, but I'm not sure if all countries will experience this or if it was just a Canadian thing. I didn't keep the original packaging, but in the box I had the UPS, a manual, an AC power cable for the input, battery cables, and a spare fuse for the inside of the inverter. Now that I have the UPS, we'll need to attach a battery. Being able to easily attach your own battery is what makes this UPS so useful. So what battery should you buy? Well, that really depends on your power draw and how long you want it to run for, but we can do some calculations. You can use a power consumption meter to get the number of watts that your stuff is drawing. Inverters are often about 90% efficient, so we'll want to add another 10% to the measured wattage. With this in mind, let's say I have an 85 watt computer and monitor, some internet equipment using about 5 watts, and a lamp with a 10 watt LED bulb. In total, we're right around 100 watts. So we'll add 10%, which will give us 110 watts. Now, you can multiply this power draw by the number of hours of runtime that you want. This will get the minimum number of watt hours that your battery needs to have. Many batteries sold will have their capacity listed in amp hours, and to convert your calculated watt hours into amp hours, you'll simply divide the watt hours by the voltage of the battery, which is commonly 12 volts. Let's say we want to get through an 8 hour power outage. This would need at least 880 watt hours. If I divide that by 12 volts, I'll get 73.3 amp hours needed to run this load. Now that we have an idea of the battery capacity that we need, we have to look at the two main types of battery that can be used. Sealed lead acid batteries can often be cheaper and can still work well in UPS applications since they're not usually being discharged and charged often, so their 500 cycle life isn't a huge drawback. However, they start to get heavy wear and voltages drop steeply when they get below 40 to 50% state of charge. Because of this, if you're planning on using lead acid batteries and expect a lot of outages, you may want to double your calculated watt hour requirement to avoid dipping below the halfway mark. You will also want to use sealed lead acid batteries which are lower maintenance and won't off gas when charging like regular car batteries would. The other type of battery is lithium iron phosphate. They've come down in price lately and they have a lot of advantages compared to traditional lead acid batteries. You can drain them down to nearly 0% without causing extra wear, they can be charged and discharged up to 5,000 times, and they're a lot lighter weight compared to lead acid which makes them cheaper to ship than lead acid if you're ordering them online. The main disadvantages are they can be a bit more expensive than lead acid and cannot be charged below 0 degrees Celsius unless heaters are used. For lithium batteries, it's worth checking out Will Prowse's channel for reviews. If I recall, he was satisfied with the performance and build quality of the Litime brand batteries for the price. On Amazon, Litime has models ranging from 50 amp hours, which would run our stuff for about 5.5 hours, all the way up to 400 amp hours, which would run our things for about 43 hours. 
In our case, the 100 amp hour model goes for around 330 Canadian dollars and will exceed our desired runtime goal. While I don't have the lie time, I do have a 100 amp hour battery from some generic brand that I gambled on. And uh, after testing, it's not quite 100 amp hours, but it'll work fine for the test. For a comparison, I went over to the Canadian Tire website and I found a 100 amp hour AGM lead acid battery for $400. Personally, I would suggest sticking to lithium unless you're reusing a lead acid battery that you already have or if you're dealing with freezing temperatures. In addition to a battery, I would recommend picking up a DC circuit breaker to go between the battery positive and the inverter. This makes it a bit nicer to work with the battery wiring. I'm going to use a 50 amp breaker since this inverter can peak to 600 watts. If you go for a more powerful inverter, you will have to adjust the breaker size as needed. I'm just going to put the breaker in line with the included battery cables by cutting the positive battery cable in half, stripping the ends, and tightening down the lugs on the breaker at each end. For a permanent install, you'll definitely want to secure the breaker to the included DIN rail. If you want to extend the wires, then you'll want to buy some 8 or 10 gauge wire, some ring terminals large enough to fit the battery and inverter bolts, and a crimp tool suitable for the wire size that you're using. With the breaker off, I'm going to connect both battery cables, making sure they're tight, Then I'm going to turn on the breaker. When you plug in the UPS, the battery will start charging. If I put my power meter in line with the UPS, I see it draw just under 300 watts, which is quite good and should allow for some fairly quick recharge times compared to a regular office UPS. In my experience, my about 70 amp hour battery seems to get mostly charged in about four hours. If I connect some stuff to it, the power is going from the input power cord to the outlets. Though with the switch off, the battery backup feature is turned off. With the switch on, the inverter will start drawing power from the battery and continue to run everything as normal when there's a power outage or if I unplug the cord. When the power comes back, the UPS will wait a moment, then switch over to the input power and start recharging the battery. Most UPSs will have some sort of battery level indicator so that you can see roughly how long you have left. It looks like this is an option on newer units from inverter.com, but I didn't have this option when I bought mine. To fix this, I got an external battery monitor. I just have this basic one that I got from AliExpress, but there's some nicer versions that will tell you the current amperage draw and the time remaining estimates. After charging up this 70 amp hour battery until it's full, I'm going to leave this computer, monitor, and Wi-Fi router running until it dies. In this test, I got to about 7 hours and 50 minutes before it shut off. With these lithium batteries, the voltage stays pretty steady throughout most of the discharge, so it can be a bit tricky to get a precise idea of its current state of charge. When the batteries discharge below what the inverter thinks is safe, it will start to beep as a warning and eventually cut power. It doesn't look like you can disable the warning. This isn't great, but depending on what you're powering, this might be a good idea. For example, if you had one of the larger models, it might be good to know that your fridge or sump pump aren't powered anymore. To stop the beeping, you could turn off the switch or connect the input to power again, maybe from a generator or some other power source if you're still in an outage. In my testing, it seems to beep for a few minutes after the input is reconnected and it starts charging again, until it hits a certain battery voltage again. You can also combine the UPS inverter with a solar setup and run a few loads from solar power, while still having the option to plug it back into grid power if you get a bunch of cloudy days. Alternatively, if you're mostly using 12 volt DC devices, you could leave the inverter off and just use the charger to keep the battery topped up. Speaking of running things directly from DC power, in a future video I'm going to use some cheaper and smaller parts to run some small DC devices like lights, phone chargers, networking, and Wi-Fi equipment. After nearly 10 years working in telecom, running stuff like this on DC power is definitely how I prefer to do it, and my home network has been making use of this for the last 5 years. To make sure you don't miss that and any other videos I'm working on, I hope you would consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.